What is sound? Well, an intuitive place to start is learning how your ears work. Think of your ears as a simple pressure transducer, like a plate that can be moved back and forth and records pressure on a graph like this. This is how we typically visualize sound, but we'll get back to that in a minute. Next, you need to understand that sound is nothing more than a pressure wave that travels through the nearly infinite number of molecules in the air. You'd have to zoom in many, many times to see those air molecules moving freely about, but it's important to remember air as a fluid because you need those molecules to transmit sound. In fact, that's why sound doesn't exist in the vacuum of space. Next, you've probably seen a speaker like this, and notice how it goes up and down when music's playing. When it pushes outward, it displaces an initial amount of air molecules. These molecules then collide with the next molecules, and so on and so forth until that pressure wave makes it to your ear. The speaker also pulls back, and when it does, it creates space for the molecules to move back into, thus creating a low pressure region that also propagates to the surrounding. So, both increases and decreases in pressure are recorded by your ear. Sound waves can be super complex, because talking, music, and other noises are not just an impulse or a consistent oscillation from a single source. Regardless though, the profile of the wave can be stored for playback later. Record players mechanically store the information through detailed carves into discs, but it can also be stored digitally. As long as you produce the pressure waves in the same way as the ones recorded, you'll create the same sound. What the sound actually sounds like is based on the properties of this wave. Let's start with a simple sound, like a constant humming like this. The amplitude of this wave determines the loudness, which as you know is based on how high the pressure of that wave is at those times. So something like an explosion or a balloon popping can be super loud. The pitch of the sound is determined by the frequency of the wave, which is how frequent the peak happens. Something with a low frequency sounds low pitched, while something with a high frequency sounds high pitched. Sound travels at a set speed based on the medium that it travels in. Every medium, whether it's air or water or whatever, has different properties such as density and elasticity. For example, think of it as a chain of molecules connected with springs. If the springs are relatively elastic, they compress more and so it takes more time to affect each concurrent molecule. If they are stiff springs though, sound can travel faster. If it's at standard temperature and pressure, sound can travel through air at around 350 meters per second or around 780 miles per hour. Although the energy from a pressure wave clearly travels through the air very quickly, the air molecules themselves hardly move. That's why you don't experience wind every time you hear a noise. In this video, it claims the kayaker broke the sound barrier and went Mach 4.7. Let's analyze that claim. The Mach number is a way of comparing how fast you're traveling to how fast sound travels in that medium. So for example, if you match the speed of sound in air, which is 350 meters per second, you'd be traveling at Mach 1. Anything higher than Mach 1, you've passed the sound barrier and you're traveling at supersonic speed. Anything less than Mach 1 is subsonic speed. The Mach 4.7 claim means the kayaker would have to travel 4.7 times faster than the speed of sound in air. That would mean traveling at around 1600 meters per second, which is ridiculous because our fastest jet aircrafts can't even go that fast. Why do you see lightning before you hear the thunder? Well, even though sound is fast, light is much faster. To determine how far away the lightning struck, just count or measure the amount of time between when you see the flash and hear the thunder. Lastly, multiply that time by the speed of sound in air to get the distance. Why do ambulances sound different when they whiz by you? Well, that's the Doppler effect. To better illustrate this effect, we can now draw 2D representations of sound waves, which are functionally the same as the 1D waves we've already shown, but acting in all directions, except we only draw a line going through the peaks to make it cleaner. In reality, sound travels in three dimensions like the expanding sphere shown here, but that's harder to visualize. Anyway, the siren from a stationary ambulance can be represented like this. If the ambulance is moving though, the circles are no longer concentric. By the time the next peak is generated on the siren, the ambulance has moved. Since the peaks are closer together in front of the ambulance, if that's where you're standing, it'll sound like a higher frequency sound. Conversely, if you're standing behind the ambulance, the frequency of the waves you hear is slightly lower. This results in the ambulance sounding differently as it whizzes by you. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you learned something. Please like, comment, and subscribe for more.